Welcome back to the Capato Architect Corner. Today we're going to be adding a development environment to your Capato pipeline. Welcome back to the Capato Architect Corner. Here is where we take a look at DevOps from an architect's perspective. Today we're going to show you how easy it is to have a new dev environment and add it to an existing Capato pipeline so that way you can receive changes and propagate changes. So we're gonna, I have a brand new dev environment that we're gonna plug in. And then we actually have some changes we've made from past videos. And we're gonna show you how easy it is to bring those in to this new dev environment. Here we are in Capado. Now this is a playground that I've set up. I'm gonna click over here and show you that in my training environment, my playgrounds, I'll go back to here. Then I have created one um, for showing these Capato Architect Corners. And it has created a Capato org. This is what we'll call a governance org that's controlling them. And then as part of the setup, it's automatically created these scratch orgs. Really nice setup of scratch org that we can use to manage our pipeline. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm adding an additional one in. And I've already done that ahead of time to make sure everything went smooth. So here you can see I have my dev one, my dev two, and you can see that I have an, an int, hotfix, UAT, and production. So this is a nice configuration with enough complexity um, using uh, Salesforce scratch orgs. And these all have the SFP for source format. Now what I've done is earlier I'd added a new one for dev 1.6a, and I plugged it into the environment. And I actually handled the back deploy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick look at that. Now there are two ways I can get into those environments. So these are existing dev environments created part of the scratch work process that are gonna be simulating a developer doing work. So this is the pipeline. I could have gone back to my playground and with this little shortcuts, I can quickly link in there and get to dev one or dev two but you may be working in actual environments. And I'm gonna show you how you get to them from within Capato primary org, or we'll call the governance org. So I'm in the primary org, um, what you could call the governance org. And then what I can do is I can go to environments and I can go to dev one environment. So I'm looking at a, a, a Salesforce record that represents that environment. And each environment could have multiple users who are th authenticated to Capato. Those are called credentials. So I'm going to go to my dev one credential. And now I'm looking at the dev one credential into that uh, sandbox. You'll see it's a source format pipeline in this in the source format. I can go open credential. So what this is doing is this is actually with just a quick click is allowing me to drop into that environment. So now I'm in this environment, which represents a place where a developer would be working. And I made a change in a past video, and I'm gonna show that to you by going to Setup, Object Manager, Account. And if we look to Fields and Relationships, there were a couple little Is Steve Test sitting here and Test Text, Test Text. So these are two custom fields that I've added. And if I go back to my uh, Capado, we're gonna go right here, and we're gonna go and go to User Stories. And we can see the user stories for the Steve checkbox and the test field on account. So these two stories have independently moved metadata through the pipeline. They've originated from dev one, and then they've been moved to dev it to int and back deployed to dev two and eventually to dev 1.6a. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding a new 1.6b. So a new developer has come along and we need to add them into the mix and get these back deploys. So let's take a look at that. So you would go to developer.salesforce.com sign up and you would sign up for your dev edition. Now, because this is a dev edition, it's gonna be authenticated on the primary www.salesforce.com and you're gonna get a validation email once it's complete. So this is actually what mine looks like. So I'm gonna be getting this email confirmation for having created a new dev environment and then what I'm gonna do is verify the account and issue it a password. 
and I've done that. So this is creating one. You'll see the 3B6 in the URL. So this represents the 3B6. I can validate that by going to settings and I can see the URL, which is the S Simpson um, and the username, which is my .b, 1.6b. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go and confirm that there are no customizations on the account object. So we're gonna go to Object Manager. We're gonna go to the account object and we're gonna go look at custom fields. And right now you're gonna see that there are, um, we have number of locations but what you're not seeing is the test text or the is Steve. So this does not have those fields. So what we have is we are now ready to begin. We have a new sandbox or a developer environment that we are ready to add to the pipeline. So we want to add this dev 1.6b into the pipeline. So let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do, step one, is create a new environment. And so this is going to be dev.1.6.b. We're going to then, it's the Salesforce platform, not SFDX. It is going to be, because we created as a developer environment, it's this selection. No namespace, no org. Um, and then what we're going to do is we can leave everything else alone. And what we can do is hit save. So we have just created a new environment. Now our next step is to give Capato access to it through what's called a credential. So what I'm gonna do is click on credential, click new. And we know that it's related to dev 1.6.b and we're gonna give it the user. It's gonna go dev 1.6.b and then we're gonna say it's the admin credential and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say it's the default, since the dev sandbox, it's limited the number of users. And what we're gonna do is save. So now we have a credential, which represents a user uh, uh, that Capato can log in as. So that you can have one environment that can have multiple Capato users. So that way as different Capato users come in, they could be authenticated with different user accounts. With, with this dev org, there's only one, so we're going to make it the dev default credential. And now what we're going to do is we're going to authenticate. And so what it's going to do is it's going to trigger the authentication. And what we're going to do is plug in the credentials for this user. And so what you see is I put in my 1.6b Capato, I put in the password, and I'm going to log in and it'll perform the OAuth, the, the single sign on passing the credential back. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow the scope of allowing Capato access in. So this is what gives Capato access into the org, which will allow the engine to come into the API. So we're going to hit, hit allow. And now we have the environment. So we've created the environment and we have a credential. Now what we need to do is go back to the pipeline and we need to add, be able to add what's called a pipeline connection. So we need to wire this in. And if we look at that, we're gonna be wiring 1.6b to feed into int sp. So what we're gonna do is find this pipeline and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the pipeline connection. So here is the pipeline. I can go to structure and you'll see the pipeline connection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new pipeline connection. And we're gonna say the source, there is no source environment. Um, this, or we are, we're gonna say the source environment is B, the destination environment is the integration environment. Now the source branch, we gotta give it the name of the branch. We're gonna go dev16b. We're gonna need to create this branch in get and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to put the destination branch. Um, this is the, net, the branch we're gonna use to commit to. Now I know that this is int.sfp. So what we have is we have the pipeline 
the destination. So we are linking it properly. And then I'm going to hit save. So we have now established the pipeline connection. And the only last thing I need to do is I'm going to go into my Capato project. So here is my Capato project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a branch. So we're going to go dev 16B. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a new branch off of main. So this way it's going to take all the code from main and bring it into the dev 16 branch and have it ready to go. So we've got a branch and we're going to refresh our pipeline. And let's see what it looks like. So now what you see is we have first, we created the environment. Second, we created the um, credential. Third, we created the pipeline connection. So we decided to, we knew where we were going to be putting it. Fourth, we added the get repo. And you'll see it's got two user stories ready to go on in. So here we are. We are in this environment, the environment, and we're ready to receive those user stories. So now that we need to bring this environment up with some recent deployments. With one click, I can come in here, I can see my two user stories, and I can go back promote and deploy. So we are creating a back promotion to send updates into this a new environment. I'm gonna close and back to the pipeline. And now what I can do is I can wait for this to deploy. You'll notice that this just changed to start spinning. So this tells me that the deployment has begun. Now, I just refreshed and the two back promotions disappeared. We're now in sync with the check mark. And what I can actually do is go to my environment. So this is the one where it didn't have the test test or the is Steve test. You see they're not there, I've been waiting. Now all I'm gonna do is hit refresh. So now as we scroll, we get to see is Steve test has now made it and we get to see the test text has made it. So that has allowed me to plug this in and receive the changes. So you just saw in a matter of five minutes, I was able to spin up a dev environment, then go to my Capato, look at the pipeline, decide where I'm gonna put it. What I did is I created a new environment record then what I did is just because it's a dev environment, there's only one primary login because dev environments only get two. I created a credential and I authenticate it. So now Capado has the power to reach into the org using that credential. And then I need to decide where to put it in my pipeline. So I, create, I go to my pipeline and create what's called a pipeline connection. And I decide that it's going to sit far to the left, feed it in the ent environment. Quickly jump into Git, whip up an environment branch, and then you'll notice that it saw that I have a couple user stories behind. With a click, promote, deploy, it was there. This is all in five to six or seven minutes total time. So it's a very quick process to be able to plug in a new developer environment into your pipeline and bring it up into sync. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for joining me at Capato Architect Corner. And this was just the beginning of a beautiful environment. Join me again, subscribe to the Capato channel and join me for future Capato Architect Corner videos. Thank you very much.